We're going to do a full processor change. This is a Tissue Tech VIP 2000, model number 4618. Um, the first thing I do is I deal with the paraffins. We have four paraffin retort tanks, and they're numbered 11, 12, 13, and 14. This paraffin um, tank I use as um, the one for rotating. We use it as the backup and keep it um, somewhat full. This number 12 is the oldest paraffin. Number 13 is the second oldest and number 14 is the newest. I always rotate these paraffins unless I know they've gotten really, really bad and it's been maybe a month or two since they've been changed. Then maybe I might do two tanks um, of change. But most of the time it's only one. I have a bucket here with a yellow bag that I use for dumping the paraffin into and just in case there's a spell we have a pad on the floor. So this is what I'm going to be doing and I, I gave myself a little chart and I keep it on the side of this flammable hood so you can refer to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the oldest paraffin number 12 and I'm going to dump it and then I'm going to move 13 to the 12 slot and then I'm going to move 14 to the 13 slot and I'm going to put this newest paraffin that I keep on reserve into the last slot and then the um, empty bucket that I just did or just emptied I'm going to refill and put in back into 11 to keep it on reserve. Okay, there's a line in here, and that's how full we want to get it. There's a little line inside the bucket. So we want to fill it to that line, or just slightly below the line. You never want to overfill these buckets because you'll get a um, overfill warning, but you certainly don't want to underfill it either because you, get, you can get an error code on this also. And they smell quite strong of xylene. because it's used for clearing out the xylene and infiltrating the tissue with paraffin. So I dump it out and I even give it a little bit of white of a white with some of these paper towels. And you can tell it's getting old. And I just leave it sit right there on this bucket. This bucket comes in handy. Okay, so now I'm going to move 13, which is still nicely full, to the line. Kind of check it as I'm moving it. And in the back, there's a valve. You can't really see it. You just can't see it. You're going to have to, but there's a, a little valve in the back. So what you're going to do, it, it actually, when you slide it back in there, it kind of automatically goes to that valve, and you're going to give it its little push to snap it in. If you don't do that, it's not going to be able to pump in and pump out the paraffin because it won't have a good seal. So now I'm going to take my next cleanest paraffin and I'm going to put it into the 13 slot just like I have on my... Well, this valve isn't... A little bit. And then I'm going to take my last paraffin. Now this one I keep full and I... Um, I have to come back to it and, and fill it up again because as you add paraffin, it only go it only melts to about a third of what you you have put in. So I'm going to have to add a little more to get it filled up to the line. And when I do this one, periodically throughout the day, I'm going to have to add more paraffin to it. That's why I like to do this first. So as this paraffin is melting, I can after I'm done changing the processor, check it again and add a little more to it. So I'm going to add more to it. Sometimes I can even take it out and put it on the bucket just to give me a little more. And this will be the newest paraffin. Again, I use the SP brand paraffin. It's good for embedding and um, processing, or paraffin infiltration on processing. So, and we'll put this newest paraffin in the last slot. So now we'll fill up the reserve container, which is 
now empty and we'll get that off full. Again, it'll only be about a third to a quarter of what you put in there, but we'll have to come back and check it later. So there's a perforated edge, top edge on the paraffin bag to pull. So don't worry about overfilling it at this point, except you don't want paraffin all in the bottom there. That reminds me, I also kind of look in there and see if it's getting a little bit of paraffin on the bottom. And once in a while, I might give that a wipe out too. If I see it's starting to get a little bit of a buildup. Paraffin has a way of getting built up fairly rapidly. So my advice is to always wipe it up, scrape it up as you go along every time you change the processor, whenever you see it. It's just amazing how it can accumulate so quickly and really be a, a mess and make the machine not function correctly. Especially if paraffin starts getting into the um, door here, this hinge, and all along, then sometimes the door, if it gets too thick, it won't even close properly. All right, so we'll come back, and I'm expecting once this melts to only be about this full. And we'll come back and put some more in there later. So we're done with the paraffin. And I use the scraper to clean all up in this area. And we're, again, we're going to revisit it again and fill this number 11 container up some more. Now this waste paraffin that's going to be in this bag, Once you don't want to overfill the bag. I only fill this about three quarters full, really not more than that, a little less is fine. And it can be actually put in regular trash. Um, so I write trash on it, um, regular trash, and I set it out for the cleaning people to throw away. Designing kind of evaporates out of it, so it's really fine to do that with. Okay. I actually like to use gauze on this, but I don't have it in my hand right at the moment. Okay. Now we're going to, um, I like the second thing I, I do is I, I deal with the xylene. The xylene is used for clearing. The xylene is the intermediate point between the 100% alcohol and the paraffin. So the paraffin can't infiltrate if it doesn't go through the xylene first. And the xylene cannot be mixed with anything with water in it, so that's why the next, the stations before it are 100% alcohol. Because xylene is so smelly and so tough, I want to make sure to, to just handle it first, and I'm going to handle it under the hood. Let's get this bucket out of the way. When you're handling the xylene too, I recommend that you wear goggles when you're doing the xylene or the um, formalin. So because I like to do this in this order because then I never have a have um, concern if, if I mixed anything up. The most critical things on this processor are this the positions of this 100% alcohol and these xylenes. If you mix, you know, you can get away with mixing some of these up and not totally destroy your tissue. But if you mix up 100% um, alcohols or xylenes, if you mix them up anywhere else, you really, your tissue will be ruined. Okay. Oops. I have a xylene waste bucket. And I'm going to put that under the hood because it's such so strong fumes. And I have some kind of old dirty funnels up here that I use. This is the purge xylene. So I'm going to take it out first. Now there's a tube here that's coming out with it. What I like to do is as I'm taking out really slowly bring the container down and it drains into the 
container rather than draining into the bottom of the processor itself. It saves you on fumes. For pouring these containers, don't pour it. When you go to pour it, you don't want to pour it like this. You, what you want to do is you want to pour it sideways because then you don't have that glug, glug, glug and spilling xylene around. Okay, so just kind of get this where it's in a good position to pour. And just carefully pour it in. Now that was our purge xylene. And we'll do the same with the number 10 xylene, number 10 slot reagent. And again, I'm gonna slowly take it out and I'm gonna bring the container down and it drains mostly into the container itself. Just a little bit on the bottom of the processor. And again, I'm going to pour it into here. And we'll do that with the third xylene. Now I have it clearly marked with tape where each position of each reagent goes. So I'm going to fill those up right away and put them back in the machine. So again, so there's no mix up with any other reagents. Now I can use the same funnel. This xylene wasn't so dirty and, and nasty that I couldn't. So I'm going to use the same funnel for filling it. It's not a big deal because it's only had xylene in it. I'll close this and we'll get this out of our way. Oh, another thing about these waste containers, do not fill them above that line because um, the waste people, it, it's really hard for them to deal with and they recommend to, to not do that. So try to. And um, the Jeff Weiss or the office manager or the lab manager, they'll have the waste containers forms for you to fill out and call for waste pickup. All right. In this small fire hood, fire cabinet, I keep the reagents for the processor. Down on the bottom, I always keep the xylene. So I'll take a couple of those out because I know I'm going to need them. Possibly three. Now the purge xylene is for cleaning. That's the one that is used for cleaning the um, processor. You'll notice it dribbles a little bit and that's kind of the nature of the chemical itself. It's hard to pour it without it dribbling just a little. The 100% alcohol does that also, dribbles a little. You wanna fill it at or just slightly below the marked line that I have set. And when you put it back in the processor, it tilts these bottles a little bit forward, so it, it gives you, it makes the reagents go over the lines that I have established. Okay. I 
and you don't want to cross thread these obviously again you don't need to crank these really hard you want them snug but not cranked hard because they have a gasket in there and you don't need to like torque it down too hard on that gasket but you don't want it loose to where it can't the vacuum can't suck in the liquid and, and they have a good seal so once you feel it's on that's good I didn't tighten it more if you do that the vacuum can actually make it where you can't really get the lid off Okay, this empty bottle can be just thrown in the waste, in the garbage. You really don't ever want to fill it too much above this line that I have here. Um, you don't want to underfill it, but you don't want to go too much over either because you might get an error code on the processor and it'll just basically tell you it's over full, especially if you put two racks in the processor or up to 230 um, cassettes of tissue. I think I think that um, thing holds around 200, maybe 230. I'm not sure, but it, for sure it'll. The processor will take 200, 200 cassettes. This is a very strong, tough chemical, and it eats anything plastic unless it's a special plastic that's xylene resistant so you don't want to get um, dribbles of xylene on the floor either uh, because it'll actually eat the bottom of your shoes and leave footprints on the floor and not to mention it's bad for the floor tiles so wipe it up any little dribbles or spills wipe it up right away okay Yeah, we'll get these back in there. Again, it's 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 snug, but it's not cranked tight. All right, let's put these back in. Now you can see that I filled it up to the line, but when I put it in, it might be slightly above the line because of the it tilts it forward just a little bit. One thing to know about these hoses when you're putting stuff back in. Now you see this handle. You want to guide this hose just a little bit down because you don't want this hose to get up in the handle. So if you have concern about that, you can do a little check. I mean, it rarely happens, but it can happen. And of course, it wouldn't process or get the reagent in if that occurred. So I give it a little bend down as I'm putting it in. And again, there's a little bit of a snug tube or little valve there, and you're going to give it that extra push in. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to take out is the 100% alcohols. Seven, eight, and we have a purge 100% alcohol. Now this purge 100% alcohol, I can use bulk alcohol from the dock, so there's no sense in wasting our good reagent alcohol that we pay extra, bio, extra um, hazardous shipping for. Um, because all it's doing is used for um, cleaning the machine and it's pump in and pump out and getting all the extra stuff out of the machine. So we use the bulk um, 
dark alcohol for this one. Again, we're going to take it slowly out, bring it down, let it drain into the... And I'm going to bring this into the um, lab area and dump them with running water. You want to have the water running at all times at this point as you're bringing the alcohols in and dumping them. And while you have these alcohol bottles out, you know, um, give things a little wipe down. You can see it starts getting kind of scummy and built up. It doesn't, it doesn't take but a second to just reach in and give it a quick wipe. I mean, that was nothing. And it just keeps our machine nice. All right, when you carry these, you can carry three or four at a time. Tilt them this way, obviously, because there's a hole there where the valve is. You can just carry them into the other room. Now, I like to keep a fan going in here when you're dumping reagents and stuff and just kind of keeps it the air circulating and keeps some of the alcohol fumes and stuff down. Again, keep the water running at all times during this process. Now these 100% alcohol containers, you do not rinse with water at all makes sense because you want as pure and clean of 100% alcohol as you can get. I have some more funnels down here. These are my clean 100% alcohol funnels. But um, for this purge alcohol, I like to put some more of this in there and swish it around from one of the older 100%. This gives it that extra little washout because that's the cleaning alcohol and it gets a little bit scummier than the others. Again, never rinse these 100% alcohol containers with water. Now I showed you in the fire cabinet where the 100% alcohol was. I'll go get those and bring some back to fill these up right here. And again, I do this in this way so I, I know that for sure nothing is mixed up with those xylenes or 100%. I'm going to go also grab um, the bulk alcohol that I keep in the big fire cabinet. Now that bulk alcohol can be in some refilled plastic jugs. It can be refilled big brown jugs but we're looking for the 100% ethanol. And when those um, bulk alcohols I just keep refilling jugs with those from the dock. It's a lot cheaper for us. We certainly don't need to waste our good reagent alcohol for purging. So I happen to have this. Sometimes I have, again, I have those big brown ones. Just look. And it'll say 100% and it says ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Now for the actual other reagents, we use reagent alcohol. We found that for this mouth tissue, this reagent alcohol seems to be a little bit better, and it's a blend of ethanol, mostly ethanol, but it has a little bit of isopropanol in it, and I thought methanol, but I guess not. It must be just isopropyl. Yeah, it says ethanol, isopropyl, and methanol. So that little bit of blend seems to work very nicely for our tissue. 
Plus, I don't fully trust the um, bulk alcohol from the dock. You don't know how it was handled, how long it's been sitting, where it came from, how clean it is. So I just don't like to use that for our actual tissue, research tissue. Okay, so I'm going to use our bulk for the purge. Again, you can fill it up to the line, completely up to the line. A touch, a little bit over is okay. Unlike the xylene, you want that a touch under would be okay because the um, alcohol here actually cleans out the residual xylene that was pumped in. Okay, that looks about right. Just a little more. Okay. And I'll get this covered right away so it doesn't pick up water from the air. All right. If you get little dribbles of alcohol, that's actually okay. You can wipe the counters down with it. I mean, you don't want to be too sloppy, but it's actually good for cleaning up things. Again, when you put these containers in there, it's going to be even filled more when it's tilted in than what it looks like. Okay. You see, we go through quite an, when you do a full change, you go through quite a bit of alcohol. And then I'll talk about, um, when I'm done with the full change, I'll talk about doing a rotation change rather than fully changing it. Because, you know, every couple weeks, instead of fully doing everything, you might just want to rotate the reagents and save some. Especially the process, oops. I overfilled that one just a little bit. So I'll just dump that because it's just, just a tiny bit over. I don't want to... hate to waste it like that, but... I'll we'll carry these back in and bring in the um, refrigerator. Now we're just off and running and grab as many of the um, containers as we can and get them emptied in, into here. Okay, and make sure the purge alcohol gets into its correct slot purge, purge alcohol. Again, you're going to bend this hose down ever so slightly. I'm going to put this in. Make sure they're they're closed, but not too tight. All right, so the rest we can just start pulling all the rest out because the most critical ones have already been done. I mean, you don't want to mix up anything, but at least it, the critical ones you know are handled in, in the right slots. You'll never have to guess that. Now we also have a um, tap water 
here that that also gets changed with every every time we do it so you don't want to forget this container of tap water put fresh in and give it a little rinse out all these other containers you can rinse except the form one so I really don't rinse them out too much unless I see they're really getting yellow from Boone's fixative It's just, I try not to even be in that habit so much. We change ours enough that I don't really worry. All right, let's take some of these in. Go we'll get the other ones. So I'll take this tap water and get rid of it and get it filled up first. like to try to do things in order as much as possible because then it saves me from questioning if I did something wrong because I know my usual habits and I really try to not vary from that so if I ever question if something was mixed up or something was right I was like well I know I always do it this way of second guessing yourself Let's get this filled up. Now this, you only fill up, unlike the other ones, you only fill this one up to this line, about a half, a little over halfway. And regular tap water is fine. All this does is help build up the pressure for it to vacuum in the other reagents. That looks good. So I'll set that off to the side. Next I'm going to do the 70% because I just like doing it in order. Since I know I'm going to be adding water to these, um, I'm going to start filling this with RO water. This is some other RO water that I had. We'll start getting that filled up because I know I'm going to need it. I put that about three quarters full. Okay, so I have this ready for me when I need to add water later. And put that off to the side and I'll keep dumping this stuff. So here's the other 70%. I have our process. Now I'm going to put in the 80% next to that, just to keep them in order and dump that down the drain. As you can see as I'm dumping them, I've marked on these containers pretty clearly that you'd fill it up with 100% alcohol and I even put the um, exact amount. You don't need to worry about that, but just fill it up to the line with 100% and then fill it up to that line with water and you're good to go. Makes it really nice to make these changes. When you guys get used to this, you should be able to do this change. You know, I'm taking my time for your purposes, but you should be able to make this change within a half hour to 40 minutes. And if it's just a rotation change, you should be able to do that in like 20 minutes or so, or less, especially if somebody's helping you. 95 and another 95 okay so now I start filling them up with alcohol And I keep that water running because it's got a lot of flushing to do. I 
again, I use a clean, I don't use the one from the back that I use for xylene and um, formalin because that's pretty dirty and stuff. These alcohols I want really nice and clean, so I use a very clean one that I keep underneath the cabinet. You want to fill it right at the line. Going to the next one. Don't go over or under. I have to get another one of um, these. All right. Looks like I'll have to get another one more alcohol bottle. do this again it's a, it's a habit I know that all the alcohol is right in there you don't have to guess like did you mix something up or make a mistake on putting the water in or whatever I mean it seems silly but you'll be surprised if somebody new doing this would start questioning themselves all right let me run and go get one more bottle of alcohol Now I'm going to add the water from this that I set aside. Now if you went a touch over with the water on the 70%, it's not a big deal. I mean, you don't want to go too much over, obviously, but if you did, it, that's okay. But the 95%, you really want it to be pretty exact with. Like the 70 and 80, yeah, you're okay. Well, I went just a little over on that one, but it's still acceptable. I mean, it's just preparing it through the graded um, alcohols to get a higher and higher concentration, so you're still fine. Although that container might be just a little too full, so... I'll have to keep an eye on that.
and we're good. So I'll get these tops on. Now as I'm carrying them in, I kind of give them a little shake and stuff like that as I'm walking them back to the processor. And I'll put them back on the processor in order. I'll carry the 70s and the 80 and then the purge water in. And it's probably good enough now to turn off this water. You see I have them lined up in order. Less chance of making a mistake. I'm going to put the purge or this um, water in first, this tap water. Now there is an activated charcoal container that you see here. That one I just kind of shake, but every six months I fully change that activated charcoal. I have to find where that container went. It's, it's quite powdery. Actually this one is more um, like chunk granulated. So I fully um, dump it and put some more in. And really you only need to fill that a little above this line with the activated charcoal every six months. But when you do a change on the processor, just take it out and give it a little shake. All right, so we got the water in. Now we'll put the 70%. Again, you want to make sure it doesn't go up in the handle. Give it a little tilt. And you can see I filled it exactly to the line, but it looks like it's a little more full, even though I did. And that's, again, let's tilt it forward a little bit. It's the 80%, is with the 80%. 95. And another 95. Oops. Now see, I think that one started to go in the handle. Yes, it did. So we'll take that back out. Try that again. I think it wants to start going in the handle. Okay. We're good. All right, so the last thing we have is the formalin. And I have a formalin bucket. This is another one that you want to do under the hood. The formalin is actually strong enough. You want to wear goggles. Be sure to have goggles on and do it under the hood. The actual fumes from formalin um, can actually fix your first layer of cells on your eyes and stuff. So... Yeah, you know, that's actually kind of good information that I was telling you about, you know, the actual fumes can um, fix a cell, cell layer. There's actually techniques where people will take a Coplin jar with um, a cell smear and just let the fumes kind of um, fix the, um, the cells on the slide rather than dipping the slide actually in it. So sometimes that technique is, is a good one to keep in mind. All right, so we got the containers labeled formalin. Again, you don't want to fill past that line. I'm using the, my old dirty um, funnel that I keep on top of the hood or top of the flame cabinet. And we're going to pull out the formalin bottle. Bring it down slowly and let it drain into the bottle. You don't want formalin all over the machine. You start seeing like a white, um, dried white spots all over the machine. That's dribbles of formalin and the buffering solution that is dried and left those that white all over. So that means just somebody's not being careful with the formalin. All right. So we'll dump that here. Now 
Now underneath this cabinet, I keep the, um, the new formalin boxes. They have a spout on them. So, and I just use it here and I actually have a bowl to catch any little drips that happen to come out. So it takes a few minutes to fill these up. It's not the fastest system, but it's worked out nicely for the lab to have this bulk formalin. And I fill it up to the line. Now this one's starting to get a little bit empty, so I, I'll have to tilt it like this. Now the formula and I don't always change quite as frequently, but I guess at every full um, change out of the processor is when I do it. Um, I would encourage you guys to rotate the reagents and about once a month do a complete full change of the processor or depending upon how used it is. Again, I was telling you the most critical things to change if you, were, if you didn't want to change the whole processor but you um, wanted to be sure your tissue is processed nicely. The most critical things to change would be the xylenes and the 100% alcohols. You can get away with a little more in, um, so it's a little overfull. So I might take a container and, and dump some of that into the container to be used for fixing. For an, um, I have a container that I keep under here and when I want to have some um, fixed tissue, Later, I'll just put this extra in there. Nice fresh formalin. Get rid of just a little bit, and somebody can use that container. Okay. All right. We got the formalin. Put that back. We'll put our waste container back. Now a lot of times I've kind of dribbled and made a big mess under this hood and this is a time that I use to take everything out of the hood and put new pads down and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that this time but, but this is the time that I you'd normally do do that. Keep our hood nice and not smelly and dirty with a lot of chemicals. And then I put my funnel back up top. All right, now we're going to revisit the paraffin because remember I told you it, it wouldn't be melted enough or wouldn't be enough in the container. So you can see it's melted down some and it'll be even less than what you see now. So before you go rotating it, um, your next change, make sure that this is filled to this line with melted paraffin. So we'll put some more paraffin in there to get melted. Fill it up again. Okay. And that's a full change of the processor. Now I want to talk about a rotation with the processor. If you're doing a rotation just to um, not waste reagents, you don't need a full change, but you want to just do a partial change, you're always still going to have to do what I said with the paraffins. That's a, that's a rotation. That's something we just always do anytime we do the reagents. And it does get quite a bit of xylene in it, so just always bank on that that's what you're going to have to do. I wouldn't change the formalin if you're just doing a partial rotation unless it's really yellow from Bowen's. I would 
take out and dump the, the first 70% and move the 70% that's in the number three slot into the number two slot and put fresh 70% in that container. I would put fresh 80%. Again, I would take out the first 95%, dump it, and take the um, last one and move it into the <laughs> slot. Refill it and put fresh into back into number five. I would do the same with the 100% alcohols. I would um, take the first one out, dump it, and take the number eight and put it into the number seven slot and put fresh into number eight. And again, you would do the same thing with the xylene. Take the number nine out, dump it into the waste um, bucket under the hood, put the number 10 into the number nine slot, and put fresh xylene into this slot. Um, for a partial change, you may not need to, um, to take care of the purge, alcohol, or xylene at that time. And that's up to you whether you can see in the book that it's been quite a while. I mean, if it's been a month, you definitely are going to want to change all the purges in the water. So, but on a partial change, you know, the first time, the first rotation, you may not change the, the purge, xylene, alcohol, or the water. But the second rotation that you do, if you do another one, um, you'll definitely want to clean those and make those fresh. And that's changing the processor. Now the last thing I do, but I always do this, is I log it in our processor change book. Now I have these sheets. Originally we had two formulas on here, but um, instead I have formula as the first one, then 70%, and it's all in order. And I have a codes here whether it's new or whether it's been, um, actually it's not replaced, this means rotated. The person who originally designed the form had it as replaced, and I have it as rotated. So I put today's date. Now we really didn't need to do a full change at this time, but I was doing that today to have on video. Really, I might have waited another week or so. And then I'm going to put new all the way down. New 70%, new 80, new 95s, new 100s, new xylenes. And, but now we're not going to put new paraffins because that's not what we did. We rotated the first one. And we rotated the second one. And we put new as the last one. Xylene wash was new. 100% dehydrant, um, that was our purge wash, that was new, our distilled water was new. The carbon filter I didn't do anything with but shake, and I didn't do a flush on it. And I'm not doing any processing, so I'm not going to put anything like that except my initials. I may do processing, and if I do today, I'll add that on in a little bit. Okay. We did all that um, change of the process of the full change, and we've kind of got all these counters a mess. We've got containers everywhere. I mean, it would not be good to leave this little room like this. Again, like the paraffin, it's like this little room, if you start just leaving stuff, it wouldn't take long for it to be a real disaster. So what I'm going to do is give everything just a, a wipe down and put everything away and clean it. And, you know, we'll put these back in the fire cabinet here in just a minute. We, I find that this spray, because it still has a little bit of a smell in here from the reagents and stuff, this really cleans off a lot of just the junk off the counter, so it gets them back nice. Put my good funnel back. Plus it keeps the dust down by just wiping it and cleaning it and being diligent about this. Especially in the sink. The sink gets really cruddy quick from all that stuff.
And it, it doesn't take a minute, but it could take a lot longer if you let it go. Stuff everywhere. Get the sink wiped down real quick. Get some of that smell out of here. It does have kind of a strong smell still. All that, and that's it. And then this gets a lot of water spots and stuff in this area. And now you got a clean room again. And the processor changed, full change is complete. 